Although not as popular as groups, I'm sure you all watching have a favorite K-pop soloist in some capacity. Maybe you aren't too familiar with soloists, but you really vibe with IU, or maybe you're an ARMY and you just like all the solo music by BTS, or maybe you're into unconventional music and you enjoy some BB, or maybe you like the iconic BOA. Well, for me, I am a huge fan of X Eyes One Cheon. From the chill, trendy hush rush to the vibrant, sunny Let's Dance, Cheon has carved out her own little style and quirky dance pop. But within this genre, we still get different sounds and nothing feels exactly the same. None of you can listen to Hush Rush, Knock, Let's Dance, and Don't in that order and tell me they sound like the same song. They all have that catchy, repetitive hook, but the sounds themselves are different. Starting off with Hush Rush, it's her softest, chillest title track, but still bizarre and quirky nonetheless. It's pure grooves and vibes, and the looping ad-lib in the background that is repeated a couple times is the little catchy bit that I always play in my head when I think of Hush Rush. For the B-sides, I'm a big fan of Aquamarine. It's also very chill and a bit dreamier than Hush Rush, and I mean, I just love Cheon's lovely voice, so it's kind of hard not to like the song. <laughs> but moving on to Over the Moon, Knock is also another silly little dance track, but feels more commanding and high energy compared to Hush Rush. It has a steady kick to it, and it never feels like we really lose it, even in the breakdown. The song builds itself up and down really nicely and never feels like it loses itself or goes off the rails. The choreo is also very well thought out, and I always find myself doing a little dance in my chair when it comes on. I'm doing it right now, and you, you can't see, <laughs> but it's happening, I promise. <laughs> As for the b-sides, I also really enjoyed them. Don't Be a Jerk also feels a little cheesy in a way, but I really like it. It has a steady beat similar to Knock, and the drop really catches my attention. It also has some sampled looping background vocals that I really like. And now, the dance-oriented release we were probably all waiting for. I don't think I've ever heard a happier song than Let's Dance. It's like having signs of positivity be waved in your face as you drive down the street of happiness. I do understand that this song can come across as annoying to people and it wears itself out easily. You know, I, I won't be delusional running around saying it's like this great sacred art, but I'm all for the happy songs once in a while. I like how it builds off Knock being a huge hit rather than being the same exact thing just shaken in a jar once or twice. It's a big contrast to some of the songs I listen to and it's a great pick-me-up. I like how this song feels like I'm running around in Mabel's fantasy land from Gravity Falls, except it's more dancey than secretly evilly. And speaking of dark, Cave is also a lot more hypnotic and darker than Let's Dance. It's not the darkest K-pop song ever, but compared to Let's Dance, it's a whole different vibe. And I'm a big fan of Cave. It got stuck in my head when it first came out. Cave, like most of Cheon's songs, has a repeating hook somewhere in the song or something that will get stuck in your head. It's a great technique to keep people coming back to the song after the first listen, but it makes them all kind of have that one something. And if that something wasn't there, the song would feel a little bit empty. For example, Hush Rush kind of has that loop being background vocal that I talked about earlier, and the line Hush Rush on the stage happens like 50 million times. If someone wants to count, I'd love to know. Knock is obviously the automatopoeia, knock. Also, I'd love to know how many times she says knock in the song. Let's dance is the word dance. Don't be a jerk is repeating don't. And I don't want to know is, guess what? I don't want to know. With all of these songs, Cheon has carved out her own genre with repetitive, catchy dance pop. But she also has a couple other bangers that don't really fit into that category. It's kind of like putting a rectangle in a square. Like it's by Cheon, but you know, it's a little bit different. Sadly, with a bunch of bangers, I feel like after Knock, Cheon never got the hype she deserved, even though she has a solid fan base to fall back in old we wheeze ones? Wise ones? Wiz whiz ones? How do you s how, I don't know how to say it, but you get the point. She has a core fan base. But even so, I feel like the hype Cheon deserves isn't really happening, so I'm obviously going to do the first thing I could think of, shamelessly promote her new comeback, Showdown. So buckle up, because for however many minutes this takes, I'm going to be talking about Showdown so much that you'll be hypnotized into liking it as much as I do. So be prepared, because we're taking a nosedive into her title track, Don't. Stop, don't, call me. don't, the title track of Showdown, has a lot going on in the best way. It's similar to the trendy garage and drum and bass, but it's not exactly like every other K-pop song played these days with the drum and bass vibe, it makes its own thing out of it. You know, you can hear the bass, but the song is also filled with ringtones and phone vibrations that follow the theme of the lyrics and the music video. 
Along with the phone sound effects, the song is very refreshing and gives summer, but it actually has substance and depth rather than just being a song that's like, woohoo, sun's out, fun time. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I really do like a song like that, you know. I was obsessed with Klaxon, but like, we saw that last time, so it's fun to see Cheon explore deeper meanings rather than just do what she did last time. You may have noticed that in the lyrics, Cheon says, don't call me Charlie. I was also very confused, but in an interview, um, you know, she explains that Charlie is very similar to her name Cheon Lee and is Cheon's alter ego. Cheon says that Charlie is the dark side of me that I don't want to reveal. My ordinary self is just Cheon. Through the conflict between these two selves, I wanted to capture not only the separation in love, but also the inner turmoil. The song Don't is about a breakup where she asks the ex to ring her bell, her phone in this case, and goes back and forth between asking her ex to call her, but it is also about Cheon expressing her feelings as her ordinary self and her alter ego experience conflict with each other. She goes round and round asking the listener to call her Charlie, but she also tells them not to. The chorus not only has that catchy phrase that many of her songs have, but her stuttering and repeating herself also represents how she feels overwhelmed as her two selves clash. She asks Charlie to keep herself away in verse 2, where the line, no, don't do that Charlie, is drowned up by the music, like she sang it to herself. By the end of the song, Cheon asks the listener to call her Charlie and she finally accepts her other side. The song's lyricism is by far some of the best out of all her songs. The music video's colors also blend together very well, especially when she uses the opposite colors of blue and orange and stuff like that. It definitely feels like a performance video at some times, and usually I'd be upset with that, but I don't mind because I love watching her dance, and I know she's more of a dancer anyway, so whatever, it's fine. I'm glad they stuck to these raw shots instead of adding like random CGI as well. I feel like this song doesn't need a whole lot of her staring at some glowing orb as she like belts out a high note. Like I feel like it just needed the dance shots in a way. The locations also feel very thought out and the song does feel extremely LA and sunny now that I think about it. Um, moving on to another song that also feels bright, haha, <laughs> segue, let's talk about Summer Heat. I wasn't expecting a Bollywood track from Cheon, but here we are! <laughs> it's another high energy bop, and seeing her dive into something she's never done before is really fun to watch. I absolutely love how Cheon likes to do different things every time she comes back. It feels like she has some sort of Krabby Patty secret formula, but she always adds a different sauce on top of it and gives the track the spice and flavor it needs. If this track was longer, I could see it being the title, but it is a little short. Also, I'm not surprised that Little Mix's Perry was on this song. I saw her name and something just clicked. It felt like Little Mix was on this song as soon as I saw her name. Like, I felt the Little Mix flavor. <laughs> I felt the Little Mix taste. I absolutely love Little Mix. They were like my favorite thing in the world in like the sixth grade. Love them so much. Also, can we talk about the choreo? The amount of energy Cheon and the dancers put in is right on the money. There's not a moment where I feel like they've lost energy, especially at the last chorus and the instrumental break. Cheon's isolations of her body are on point, and I love when she does the little leg and hip movement at Feel the Heat. It's just my favorite part of the whole entire choreo. And then right after, we get into the little dance break bit, and she has perfect control over her arms. I feel like I've watched the Summer Heat stage like a million times. I need another one. Once again, I wasn't expecting anything like this, but I love it so much. I just wish it was longer, and that's like my only critique. Now this, this is my song, guys. This song is a little laid back in a way like Knock, but it's still a dance track nonetheless. You know, you'd think you get sick of the same line playing over and over and over again in the chorus, but I'm actually obsessed. <laughs> Almost every day, I have been walking around my house singing the line, I got the power, super supernatural, like I, I actually cannot get enough. When they were producing this, I don't know what they put into that part of the song, but I love it. I want to know what was going on there, because I'm going to need more of it. <laughs> the whimsical and hypnotic vibe this song has is immaculate. I love how she dances around the idea of having powers to see in someone's heart. I really, really want to see something for this song, like a visual or a lyric video or something. Every single song besides Supernatural got some sort of video, and I feel like this one is missing something. I don't know. 
song wise it's amazing but there's so much to work with when it comes to this song like i'm waiting for some sort of story to be told and i just i didn't get anything like i want a tale between two people like some sort of unrequited love or maybe something happens by like fate i want to traverse the woods to find a witch and i want her to show me everything through a crystal ball and i want fog surrounding me as i unveil the story through the crystal ball like there is so much we could do with this song and we got fan-made color-coded lyrics you know like it, nothing happened <laughs> overall i'm really pleased with everything about this song but i wish it got more when it came to promotions like i would have traded the summer heat stage for the supernatural stage i'm sorry summer heat but there's a lot to work with with supernatural and we just didn't get anything I know crying to music is always seen as a little bit cheesy, but there have been nights where, you know, I've been going through it and this song just tore through my walls. Maybe it's something about the acoustic guitar, her voice, or the lyrics, or maybe it's all of it together, but this song gives me goosebumps and it makes me really emotional. The way the lyrics question the idea of everything working out in the end really hits close to home. Asking yourself if you're going to make it out of wherever you are and feeling like you've hit rock bottom. And you know, you look around and you see bright lights of the city that surrounds you and people are laughing while you're standing all on your own. But you know, you get up, you look back one more time, and then one step at a time, you walk forward. It's really beautiful, right? I mean, that's what I think of when I hear this song. It makes you feel like you're in a big city that hugs you tightly and you're on the train looking out the window and you just see everyone outside, and they're all living their own little life, doing their own little thing, and you're just there in the moment. Like everyone else, you're also doing your own little thing, but you're doing it on your own. It's a really vulnerable song, just like the next one, Dreaming. <laughs> Guys, Dreaming is my girl. She is so OST worthy, and I want this song used on like an emotional TV show moment. I just want it now. I don't know where, but I need it now on a K-drama. It's so impressive to go from main dancer of a group to singing a lovely ballad all on your own, and she also sounds perfect doing it. I love her velvety voice and just the way she sounds. I'm not extremely big on vocal terminology, but I do know that she sounds really great. You know, I couldn't describe it for you or tell you what's happening specifically but to my ears you know my ears are probably you know a good critic of their own so i'd say it sounds pretty good <laughs> i also love how she is writing the lyrics on the cp this song specifically being one of them it's such a beautiful written piece for her fans and i wouldn't change any of the lyrics i feel like i usually have a lot to say when there's a song i really like but for dreaming i'm honestly just speechless <laughs> I know that I always say that to you guys and then I turn around and I speak for like the next 10 minutes, but this time I'm truly speechless. I wouldn't change this song at all. It's a 10 out of 10 in my books. Oh my goodness, we're finally at the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I am usually a scared to do music reviews because while I consider myself qualified to judge the dancing, Sometimes I feel like I'm stepping into a whole new world with any vocal parts or even like rap stuff like I don't know like objectively what I'm talking about so I try to keep it as subjective as possible. I hope I was staying in my lane. If there's anything that I was wrong about, I am open to criticism, you know. I welcome it with open arms if I'm wrong. Just keep it respectful, you know? I'd love to talk to you, but just be nice. <laughs> Either way, I've had a lot of fun listening to all of these songs on repeat while I wrote this script. At the end of the week, I think I had listened to Don't like 57 times. I hope none of you got bored listening to me talk and talk out of my mind. And second to last thing, I just want to apologize that this video took an extra week for me to get out. I honestly just wasn't feeling it by the end of, you know, doing the script. I usually get my videos out within like two weeks of each other, but as much as I love Cheyon, I really like this EP. I just don't know what happened. I just got so sad for like a week. I was just like not feeling it. I I don't know. I just didn't want to make a video, um, but it's here now. So yippee. <laughs> 
And lastly, if you've already listened to the EP, please tell me your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. And if you haven't, I hope this convinced you to listen to it. Maybe, possibly. With all of that said, stay safe wherever you are. And I'll see you all later. Be nice while I'm gone. Bye!